So for cath lab, just think it clears the clot. Also called PCI, percutaneous coronary intervention. Key terms that show up on exams are arterial or even angioplasty. Now, angiographies or even angiograms are images taken via x-rays to visualize the blockage. And plasty means balloon or stent placement, requiring more recovery time. Patients are usually awake, not under general anesthesia. So before were NPO 6 to 12 hours, meaning no eating or drinking. And after, patients will lie flat for several hours and are encouraged to drink to dilute that contrast dye, which we'll be covering next. Now bypass, also called open heart surgery, requires more recovery time, around three to five days in the hospital. So words including bypass like coronary artery bypass graft, or even mid-cath, minimally invasive direct coronary artery bypass grafting. Usually a shorter recovery time because there's a smaller incision in between the ribs. Now post-operative general rules here, we avoid lifting heavy objects and we protect incisions from infection. So big no-nos here guys, no baths or soaking the wound, but a shower is okay if they avoid soaking the wound underwater. We wanna prevent infection here, so we monitor for redness, warmth, swelling, and draining, specifically at the incision site. If there's any of these, then we report it to the HCP immediately. Now, test tips for cath lab. Guys, always think contrast kills the kidneys, usually used in procedures previously mentioned. So contrast dye, also called iodine, is a thick dye highlighter used to find blockages and narrowing. But it's really hard for the kidneys to wash it out of the blood. It's kind of like dumping cement into the washing machines of the body. So think thick dye, the kidneys will die. Now here are the top seven test questions that come up with cath lab. Just remember the ABCs. A for allergy to iodine. And yes, warm flushing is normal. So guys, allergies to shellfish is actually not used as a tool anymore to screen for iodine allergies, according to the last NCLEX update. B is for bleeding at the catheter site. Direct or manual pressure on or above the site for any potential bleed. And patients will be lying flat hours after, aka supine. So NCLEX key terms here, guys, write these down. We're not putting the patient in semifowlers and no crossing the legs. Also, no blood thinners within a six hour window. This means no heparin, no warfarin, aspirin, or even clopidogrel. Now C is for creatinine, always indicating kidney function. Normally 0.9 to 1.2. So remember, contrast kills the kidneys. Kind of like dumping that thick cement into a washing machine. So creatinine over 1.3 usually means an injured kidney, also called contrast nephropathy. So we avoid renal failure patients, and key word here guys, write this down, diabetics on metformin. We stop metformin 48 hours before and after the cath lab. We want to prevent lactic acidosis and nephropathy. And we can give mucamus to protect the kidneys but it's not common on the NCLEX. So remember, iodine is like thick dye. The kidneys will die. Always a big NCLEX tip. Now the last C, you can't palpate the pedal pulse after surgery. Guys, we always call the doctor, AKA HCP, healthcare provider. Remember this, pulses equals perfusion. Normally we get diminished pulses, but only four to 12 hours max, not one to two days. So NCLEX key words here, guys. Cold, cool, or remarkably cool legs, absent pulses or non-palpable, or even just present with a Doppler ultrasound. Big no-no, lack of perfusion. 